and welcome to the 10th Sunday after Trinity. Uh, I guess I don't do this very often, so I'm going to do this today. So I'm going to introduce myself. So I'm Pastor Michael Meyer. I'm pastor here at Redeemer Lutheran Church in Moncton, First Lutheran Church in Logan, and St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Tavistock. Uh, today we're going to be following the order of divine service setting one, which, if you have your handy hymnal with you, is on page 151. 151. And uh, if you don't have a hymnal uh, or just prefer to follow on screen, of course, I always put everything on screen. So with that all being said, let's begin. Our hymn of invocation for today is number 797, Praise the Almighty, 797. Yeah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if this is your earnest and penitent confession, then hear the good news that you are offered. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our introit for today is drawn upon various portions of Psalm 55. I call to God, and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not yourself from my plea for mercy. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and horror overwhelms me. But I call to God, and the Lord will save me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. I call to God and he hears my voice. He redeems my soul in safety. Cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord have mercy, help, save, comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power above all in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant us such a measure of your grace that we may obtain your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasures. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading for today is from the prophet Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Stand in the gate of the house of the Lord, and there call out this word. Hear the word of the Lord, all you people of Judah, who enter through these gates to worship the Lord. This is what the Lord of armies, the God of Israel, says. Correct your ways and your actions, and I will allow you to live in this place. Do not trust deceitful words, chanting, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. Instead, if you really correct your ways and your actions, if you act justly toward one another, if you no longer oppress the resident alien, the fatherless and the widow, and no longer shed innocent blood in this place or follow other gods, bringing harm on yourselves, I will allow you to live in this place, the land I gave to your ancestors long ago and forever. But look, you keep trusting in deceitful words that cannot help. Do you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal and follow other gods that you have not known? Then do you come and stand before me in this house that bears my name and say, We are rescued, so we can continue doing all these detestable acts? Has this house which bears my name become a den of robbers in your view? Yes. I too have seen it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gradual for today is uh, two verses of Psalm 17. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. From your presence let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. Our epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you used to be enticed and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are different gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are different activities, but the same God works all of them in each person. A manifestation of the Spirit is given to 
each person for the common good. To one is given a message of wisdom through the Spirit, to another a message of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the performing of miracles, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. One and the same Spirit is active in all these, distributing to each person as he wills. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus approached and saw the city, he wept for it, saying, If you knew this day what would bring peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. For the days will come on you, and your enemies will build a barricade around you, surround you, and hem you in on every side. They will crush you and your children among you to the ground, and they will not leave one stone on another in your midst, because you did not recognize the time when God visited you. He went into the temple and began to throw out those who were selling, and he said, It is written, My house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Every day he was teaching in the temple. The chief priests, the scribes, and the leaders of the people were looking for a way to kill him, but they could not find a way to do it, because all the people were captivated by what they heard. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our hymn of the day for today is number 644, The Church's One Foundation. Number 644. Yeah. 
of peace forevermore till with the vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed and the great church victorious shall be the church at rest yet she Grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We are told in Scripture three times about events where Jesus wept or shed tears, and I think it fitting for us to discuss why. The city of Jerusalem was magnificent in the days of Jesus. People were so blinded by its radiance as it reflected the Palestinian sun that they had to turn their eyes away as Josephus, the Jewish historian, tells us. When our Lord, preparing to enter Jerusalem, stopped at Mount Olivet's height to look toward the majestic city, there was no awe or admiration in his gaze. Instead, he stood silent. His lips quivered, his eyes filled with tears. Jesus just had his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. What would bring tears to his eyes right after that event as he viewed the city? Jesus might have seen the temple from there, a glorious structure on which architects and laborers toiled for 50 years and were still not finished. Yet Jesus was saddened by the mockery, the shocking insincerity, the cold formality that was found in his father's house. Jesus also could see the money changers whom he would soon throw out as they sold animals and exchanged money, piling up profits in the name of religion. Jesus saw the multitudes who bought the best animals and thought that by such offerings they could be cleansed from their sins, even though their hearts were far from God. He might have heard the chanting of the Pharisees who might be saying things like this, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, tax collectors. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. The hypocrisy and arrogance made Jesus cry. <sighs> and lest we get too cocky about things, if Jesus were here in the flesh today, I am confident that Jesus would shed tears over Canada's spiritual condition. We have so many churches in our land, but how many strive to follow the great commandment? If they loved the Lord with their whole being, things would change. The preaching of the gospel has been pushed into the background. Ask many Canadians about salvation and they will likely say that they don't need to be saved. Even the Christians will many times answer, No, I'm good, thanks. But remember, no one is good. No, not even one. And many are filled with greed, lust, hatred, and have many secret or disguised sins. We are a nation formed through Christian pioneers, blessed above many others because of our heritage, and we're a free people. Even so, we have forgotten God, neglected our privileges, spurned our blessings, and rejected our Savior. We can find Jesus Christ on Mount Olivet, grief-stricken not only for Jerusalem, but for many churches in Canada that are more concerned about the things of this world than about saving souls. Many are people-pleasing and more concerned about what people in this world will think about them than what God thinks. How can you believe if you accept praise from one another, yet make no effort to obtain the praise that comes from the only God? If this world is to come closer to the Almighty, it must start here, in the churches. To stop the tears of Christ, we must go back to the Bible, back to our Redeemer, back to the blood of atonement, back to justification by grace through faith 
at baptism for good works. From all of it, the Savior could likewise see the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest. He occupied the very highest position in Old Testament worship. He alone could enter the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement. And yet that high priest, the one who should have been closest to God, was an unbeliever, a murderer at heart, and an enemy of the Messiah. And he was surrounded by many Sadducees who openly attacked Scripture, denied the supernatural, and the hope of the resurrection. These men were responsible for their country's downfall. 20th century Sadducees sit securely in high places. Pulpit politicians who constantly emphasize the separation of church and state in order to keep God out of the public eye. And these people are on the increase. So brothers and sisters, we need to preach the word, to be prepared in season and out of season, to correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Jesus from Olivet could see Jerusalem's skyline where the were the high palaces of the governing officials, imposing structures of these mighty towers, the castle of King Herod, the residence of Pontius Pilate. And Jesus could detect the corruption, deceit, and iniquity practiced within those walls. He wept as he contrasted the doom soon to break over the city. Such a shame that Jerusalem did not have honest, God-fearing officials who did the bidding of the people. We, here in Canada, should thank God daily for our democratic government, but we shouldn't be blind to the fact that graft, bribery, corruption have sometimes flourished in our government, and many times this is allowed without interruption. So we need to be praying for our government. And our Savior, though, sees our afflictions, and he is moved by our sorrows. Man of sorrows. What a, a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners like us to reclaim. Hallelujah! What a savior. And as Isaiah says, surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. I should have used a different word. Sympathy involves understanding from my own perspective. Empathy involves putting ourselves in the other person's shoes and understanding why they may have particular feelings. Jesus has more than pity or sympathy. He has empathy. Who, being in the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Every human experience Christ has experienced, yet was without sin. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. Now we have more than a, just a teary-eyed Savior. We have a bleeding, dying, and crucified Christ. Human tears often mean little. Some people can cry at the drop of a hat. But Jesus proved his earnestness when he, the mighty and majestic God, bowed his head and accepted Calvary. We have no need to cry endlessly over the sins and sorrows of our lives. We can have the inner conviction that we can triumph over temptation, find strength in weakness, and be overcomers. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations, Jesus says. So continue to be strong and trust in that saving grace given by Jesus Christ, the one who died, rose, and ascended into heaven on our behalf. Amen. We confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, we give thanks for Christ Jesus, in whom we receive the things that make for peace. Keep us trusting in him and eagerly expecting his final day of visitation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of the Holy Spirit, you bless your servants with a variety of gifts from one and the same Spirit. Grant that each of us may use these gifts for the common good of your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, your name be hallowed among us. Preserve it through pure and right teaching in our churches and in the lives of your children, lived according to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring about your good and gracious will. Bless those who have given authority in our government to break and hinder the plans of the wicked and encourage whatever is righteous and good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Teach us to be wise and generous with the daily bread you provide, as you are generous to us. Defend us from all greed, and remind us that our security is not in our wealth, but in your abundant care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Defend us from temptation, good Lord, and every craft of the devil. Give us your spirit that we would cling to your word at all times and remain steadfast in the faith, sharing Christ's victory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Deliver your servants from every evil of body and soul. Provide for those in need and grant endurance to the afflicted, including your dear children, Albert Knies, Lundy Priestap, David Ritz, Lawrence and Ruth Schmidt, Judy Scheel, Elizabeth Winkler, Vera Ahrens, Eric and Paula Hins, Norma Rose, Renata Rose, Ron Rose, Lois Carter, Artis Herman, and Susanna Kingsbury. Restore them to health speedily according to your will. Keep us together in the ark of your church until your last hour comes. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, because you love to show mercy, hear the prayers we offer for your ancient people, that acknowledging Jesus Christ, the light of truth, that they may be delivered from darkness. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you O Jerusalem let us pray the Lord's Prayer together our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received both forgiveness for our many sins and the assurance of your love in Jesus Christ. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in faith until we inherit eternal salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our 
him to depart today is number 729. I am trusting thee, Lord Jesus. 729. Trusting Thee, Lord Jesus, trusting only Thee, trusting Thee for full salvation, great and free. I am trusting Thee for pardon, at Thy feet I bow, for Thy grace and tender trusting now. I am trusting thee for cleansing in the crimson flood, trusting thee to make me holy by thy blood. I am trusting Trusting Thee for power, Thine can never fail. Words which Thou Thyself shalt give me must prevail. I am trusting Thee, Lord Jesus, never let me fall. I am trusting Thee. Thank you so much for coming and being a part of this as we celebrate this 10th Sunday after Trinity. Uh, may you spend the rest of your day and even your week uh, really rejoicing in that fact that Jesus weeps for you because he knows what you need to do. And he's given you in his word, the scriptures of the, the Holy Bible, all the instructions you need. And so I pray that you will cling to those, cling to the faith that only comes through the grace of God, through the revealing of his will through scripture. And so being saved by grace through faith, we have much to celebrate, even as Jesus weeps for us. Amen.